The physics guy is up and looks like no one left, so that's good. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you today about a couple of passions of mine. One is nuclear weapons, the other one is cadet leadership development. And I'm not as good of a speaker as the previous speaker, so I have some words on the slides to help me along. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask a question. These things are all related, you'll see. So should you show up fashionably late or on time to a party to meet a friend? And to analyze the situation, we're going to look at what we call a payoff matrix. Okay? So we're going to analyze the situation from the fact of if we receive payoff from these different outcomes. So we have you and your friend. So if you show up late, you're going to receive some payoff from that outcome. right? Um, you show up when your friend is likely to be there, so that's a good thing. But if you decide to show up on time, your payoff depends immensely on what your friend decides to do. So if you show up on time and your friend is on time, that's really good. Everyone's really happy. You get to spend a lot of time together. The emoji says so. But if you show up on time and your friend is late, now you're really upset, you're really annoyed, you're really lonely. So now you get no payoff from that outcome. And so we can fill out this payoff matrix for your friend as well. And so if we analyze the situation, we see a couple of things. One, you choose what you do based on what your friend might do. And so if your friend arrives on time, it's best for you to arrive on time. If your friend arrives late, it's best for you to arrive late. And this is a problem. We see there's an optimal solution. If everyone arrives on time, that's great. But if we're really risk averse and we're logical thinkers, then we're probably going to slide down to this bottom right corner and arrive late. We all do it. I know you do it. So an optimal solution exists, but it is risky. OK, so now let's expand this to nuclear weapons. So should you dismantle your nuclear weapons program? So here's the situation. Same kind of two by two payoff matrix, player A, player B. You're player A. And so you have another country that may or may not disarm. And so if you do decide to disarm, I'm sorry, if you decide to keep your nukes, you get some payoff from that. You get some security. But if you decide to disarm, your payoff depends on what your adversary does. So if everyone gets rid of their nukes, that's really good. No threat of nuclear war. Everyone's happy. But if you disarm and your adversary keeps his nukes, you get no payoff, you have the threat of being attacked. So we fill out this payoff matrix again, and we see the same payoff structure that we saw with the fashionable lateness game. We can expand this to FCDT. So who actually knows what FCDT stands for? One, that's good, okay. So fourth class development time. This is the time that yearlings are supposed to spend with their plebes. So here's the situation. Should you invest your time and conduct FCDT? Again, we run through the same kind of drill. Assume there's another cadet that may or may not do FCDT. If we don't conduct FCDT, there's a little bit of payoff with that. We get to sleep in. We're not a tool. But if you do decide to do FCDT, your payoff depends on what player B does. So if everyone does FCDT, that's great. We're kind of supporting each other. But if player B doesn't do FCDT, you're even more of a tool, and you lost sleep that player B did not lose. And so we have a similar two by two payoff matrix, and we see the same payoff structure. And we can assign the same payoff structure to conducting morning room inspections. Really similar. And so um, last year and this year, I conducted a survey and asked you how your team leaders were doing. And I asked you as team leaders how you were doing. And so last year I pulled the class of 2017 and asked them how many days it had been since they conducted FCT and inspected their plebes room for AMI. And you see the numbers there. So some mean and median values. Then this year I conducted the same survey for the class of 2018. Some of you up there took the survey. And the same thing for the class of 2019. And so I think cadets are playing this game every day. 
So we see the average number. Um, it looks like cadets are conducting FCDT and inspector is about once a week. I think you're supposed to do it more. So this is you all sliding down to that bottom right hand corner of that payoff matrix. And so we've looked at some two by two games, two player games, simple two by two matrix. But in reality, there's 4,400 of you. And you're all playing this game on a daily basis. And so this is called an N person assurance game, where N is the number of people, 4,400. And we see this game when it comes to treaty compliance, nuclear weapons, FCDT, and room inspections. And so instead of getting a simple two by two matrix, we can actually graph a curve. And so we graph the utility of participating versus the percentage participating. So if most people are participating, that's good. We get more utility derived from doing that thing. And we get the opposite curve if you're not participating. So we can imagine a situation where we're over on the left side of this curve. Not many people are doing the thing that we want to do. It's really hard to get those first movers to buy in, right? If we find ourselves on this side of the curve, that's really great. The utility of participating is very high. And so we're all kind of uh, keeping the same normative behavior that we're supposed to. And so in the middle, we see this natural tipping point where that cost-benefit analysis flips, and it gets easy to get rapid buy-in into whatever you want to do. And so this is my challenge to you as leaders in this room, is to change the game. First, you want to build an organizational culture centered around trust. Because if you're player A, and you trust that player B is going to do what he's supposed to do, or he, what she is supposed to do, you're more willing and able to do that thing. B, build incentive to, to participate. So change the cost-benefit analysis of each individual actor. Also create time in your organizational schedule to allow your subordinates to excel. So if we do this, spending that time becomes less costly to the individual. And if we provide that structural change, that can provide some accelerated cultural change. So this is one proposal. So on the left, you see your cadet schedule. It's packed. If we shorten every class to 50 minutes from 55, and if we move lunch back 10 minutes, we can create 25 minutes in the morning where you can do FCDT the way you're supposed to do it, you can inspect rooms. The chain of command can use that as they see fit. Just one idea for structural change that can accelerate cultural change. And just remember that as leaders, we allocate time and we set the priorities for our subordinates. So really what we want to do is we've established some standards of behavior. We want to bring the normative behavior in line with those. So we want to lower the tipping point to get people to buy in. So for the cadets in the audience, it's one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite shows. Um, and my message to you is that you are in the good old days. You heard Mr. McClure speak. Um, all those things that he's, he was talking about, you're experiencing now. Don't wait to do this stuff. Be the leader that we know you can be. So start changing the game for yourselves. Thank you. So I would like to thank um, Colonel Graham and Colonel Prince together. Rio, you've done a great job adjusting to things on the fly. Uh, Colonel Sheets for putting me in charge of the advanced physics sections, which allowed me to do things like take surveys and talk about leadership in class. And then Zach Cohen. Uh, Zach came to me in September of last year, and he said his dream was to do a TED Talk. And so I said, OK, well, we'll just change lab eight of physics 255 to be a TED Talk. And so that spurred on this idea where um, I think Rio and Zach and Jack Hadley and some others uh, did this thing called Good Idea Friday. And those Good Idea Fridays turned into this TEDx. So um, you'll hear Zach in a few minutes. So congratulations to you. Thanks. Thank you.